buzz about the Business Roundtable's proposal to raise the eligibility age for Medicare and Social Security to age 70. I wrote about the issue in the observation yesterday, but one of my next guests could not disagree more with the group's proposal. Max Reichman is president and CEO of the National Committee to Preserve Medicare and Social Security. We also have a supporter of raising the age. Bill George is the former CEO of Medtronic. He's now a Harvard Business School professor. Good to see you both. Thanks so much for joining us, Max. Thank you. Let's go to you first. The Business Roundtable argues that the demographics have completely changed. We now live much longer. Why shouldn't we raise the age for eligibility? Well, you know, this, this plan is called a plan to reform Social Security and modernize Medicare. I always get nervous when I hear those terms because it's really a plan to cut uh, benefits and uh, raise the cost for health care for seniors. And it really doesn't, it doesn't make sense to have seniors pay more and get less. Uh, the, the plan talks about how people are living longer. That's not true for all populations. And we need to improve these benefits. We need to uh, add benefits to Medicare, not cut the Medicare program. No, we but need but to can, you, we can you actually say that it's not true, though? Because when you look at the actual, uh, the actual ages, when, when Social Security first came out, there was a, uh, a, a living standard expectation uh, of, of between 60 and 70. And now women are living to 81, and I believe the life expectancy for a man is 78. So we, it, the, the, the life expectancy numbers have, in fact, gone up. But the cost of living for senior citizens has also gone up. And it is very important to remember that in many communities in this country, these life expectancies have not gone up. And we have to be, you know, the CEOs that are part of the uh, business roundtable, they can easily work until they're 70 or longer. If they want to retire, they can float through retirement on their golden parachutes. That is not true for the vast majority of Americans. This plan, the business roundtable plan, is really, I call it, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a shotgun wedding of the Bowles Simpson plan and the Ryan budget plan and the product the product is really a a monstrosity of a policy document that ignores the the real physical fiscal realities and challenges of Americans who are not multi-millionaire uh, CEOs Mm -hmm. Bill, what about that? I mean, opponents say that hundreds of thousands of seniors could find themselves without medical insurance. Uh, the cost of their care landing in the government's lap. What about that? Maria, I couldn't disagree more with Max. I believe that this is a very courageous proposal from the Business Roundtable, put together by Gary Loveman of Caesars, who used to be a colleague of mine at Harvard Business School. Very sound. People are, if you hit 65, the expectancy is about 20 years. Medical technology is learning how to keep people alive longer and longer, but we still have our disease-prone years hitting about the same time in the late 50s. So I think people are going to have to work longer. We're going to need these workers. And I think this is a very sound way to get Medicare solvent. It's not going to be solvent today. We have unbounded costs in Medicare. Lifestyles are pushing it up and end-of-life issues. And there's just tremendous upward pressure on Medicare costs. And I'm extremely concerned we're not going to be able to fund it or else it's going to squeeze out everything out of the budget. First of all, this proposal is going to be phased in. It doesn't affect anyone at all who's over the age of 55. So they're all excluded. And frankly, it won't phase in until people are today are under 35. So you've got a long period of phase in, a very sound proposal that puts both Medicare and Social Security on the right track. And I think 70 to new 50. I turned 70 last fall. And I can tell you, like many of my colleagues, we are continuing to work and we're enjoying life. And I think this can work and work very well. And under the Affordable Health Care Act, people will be protected in this period. So I think Maria, it let will me just work very well. let me just comment. Sure. Uh, uh, under the Affordable Care Act, there are some real cost savings in the Medicare program. Many of these provisions of the Affordable Care Act have not even been implemented. They will be, some of them will be implemented next year. Wouldn't it make sense to see how this program evolves? And it, it is very short-sighted. I, I couldn't disagree more with uh, with uh, your other guests on the program. I could not disagree more that uh, we need to uh, clamp down on the Medicare program, charge seniors more. This plan of the Business Roundtable does nothing, absolutely nothing, to control health care costs. We need to control health care costs, not just as uh, seniors uh, to pay more. Un uh, the Kaiser Foundation, the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities, have issued a number of reports 
whatever we save by uh, raising the age for Medicare eligibility, twice that will be spent by, uh, by state governments, by, em by employers, by Medicaid programs, by state uh, health care programs. So if we save $5 billion out of the federal treasury, we're going to spend twice that. Uh, in, uh, but, in but something's the next gotta year. give, well, right, Max? Something's gotta give, Max. Something's According gotta to give, and, and what? Office, yeah. Something's just, gotta let, give. Let, and let me just get this. Uh, one thing: the Congressional Budget Office, Max, it says raising the age gradually between 2012 and 2021 would save 113 billion dollars. 113 uh, billion right, dollars just by would, moving the eligibility age. So, do we really right. have a choice here? I mean, something's who, got Maria, to give. We, we have a choice. Maria, who's going, who's going to who's going to pay for that? It's going to be all the entities that I that I just outlined. And yes, we need to do some things, but why don't we look at having the federal government mandating the federal government to negotiate for the best price for the prescription drug Part D plan under Medicare? There are now specifically prohibited from doing that. Why don't we allow the reimportation of cheaper drugs uh, into this country, safe drugs from Canada? And finally, uh, the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. We have no idea how much, and the CBO, I think, incorrectly doesn't score savings that we know. Common sense tells you yep. if seniors under Medicare do not uh, have to pay out of pocket for all these preventative care uh, procedures, uh, uh, diabetes testing, mammograms, colonoscopies, yep. they're going to avail themselves of these medical procedures. That is going to save money. Bill George, Maria, final, final Maria, word here. Yes. Go ahead. we got to go. we got to go. We're in go agreement. We're in agreement we need to cut Medicare costs. And I can tell you, the way they're planning to do it right now, they just uh, did 27 percent across the board reimbursement. I'll tell you what's going to happen. That really threatens Medicare because I tell you, a lot of private physicians and, and private uh, hospitals are not going to take Medicare patients at all. And that's a much greater threat. And so I think to get this solvent, I agree with Max, we need to get costs under control. That's a big change, and there's very little in the bill to do that. Mostly it just involves cutting reimbursement. We need to okay. do that. I believe let in affordable me, let me care just, organizations. Let me just say, we do not support cutting reimbursements to providers to the point where it will impact adversely access to good health care. We oppose Nobody that. wants to cut anything. We, are, we, we get that. But we're, we're also talking about $16.4 in debt. Thanks, guys. We will continue following Thank you. this.